Lab 4 is a continuation of Lab 3. So we will do it uh, inside Lab 03 folder. Okay, let's bring up the containers. Lab 3 TCP hijacking. The client set up a telnet to the server and the attack will hijack this telnet connection. We know telnet is a TCP connection. Launch the attack manually and launch the attack uh, automatically. Shock to fill out. You need to put into each field on the spoofed TCP packets. Template code is here. Okay, let's uh, open a shell into the attacker, the victim, and the user one. The victim is the telnet server. You can see the telnet D service with net state. See, uh, this is a telnet service. 
is listening on point number 23. Now from user 1, turn that into the victim. Username, seed, password, DES. And then you see we turn that into the victim machine. In the victim machine, you can check that. Let me see established from dot six with this uh, remote port number. Now let's uh, open Wireshark and sniff on the interface. We want to uh, sniff what packets sent from the victim machine, TCP port number 23. Just press under. Okay, now from the client, type a uh, command, for example, ls. You can see uh, the TCP and the telnet communication. The telnet. Here is an S. Plane status one, you can see what the data it is. Payload just one byte. Data is S. Oh, this is uh, this one from the server to the user, this one from six here five is a victim, six is a user. So this one is from user to the victim or to the server. From user to the victim. Now we also want to send a packet a packet from the user to the server. Send a spoof packet. So let's type uh, enter in the Use the machine. And you see uh, nothing in the home folder. Here we get uh, the technology packet from the client to the victim or to the server to transfer yeah. now how do we spoof a packet when we spoof a packet we need the next sequence number and the acknowledgement uh, number. So we use this code source destination source point number destination point number second number acknowledge number data and so on. in this uh, task three in task 3 
what the purpose of this task tree. Run the type automatically. This is uh, here. Run it manually. And we we want to uh, steal some information from the terminal server. For example, the attack can inject malicious commands, deleting an important file, or get the contents of an important uh, file. Okay, now let's uh, create a secret file on the server and the user's account. Then we will use a hijack to steal the secret information. Here on the user machine, user console, at the home folder we create a secret file. Secret Type control B you can see uh, it contains a single line. This is a secret file. What we want to do is we want to uh, the TCP session and uh, steal the contents of this uh, secret file from the attack machine. By running this uh, hijack, hijack dot pi, why we create manually? Because we need to figure out the sequence number. Luckily, we are shock provide us this um, sequence number and a acknowledgement number. So we know the source. Source IP from the user to the victim machine to the terminal server. Source port number. Please pay attention. We need the last one. Sequence number. Yours may be different, please use yours. If your attack didn't work, it's very likely you didn't uh, put the right uh, sequence number, next sequence number, and acknowledge number in your code. Okay, now let's uh, save it. Here the data. We want to uh, steal the data from the server. This return is used to uh, 
to avoid concatenation so we can run our command cat secret then we want to redirect the contents to the attack machine using a reverse share This is the attack machine IP. We also need a phone uh, number, let's say 9090. And the interface is the attacker's interface. Here is the attacker. This is the interface. Save it. Okay, now what do we need? We need to run a server using Netcat to receive this information from the attack machine. We run Net less into a 9090. We want a lesson in the background so we can uh, execute the attack script. Otherwise, we need to open to a uh, console window. So put in the background. Now we can uh, make sure you save with your Python code. Then we run it. Hijack. Okay, did you see it? This is a secret file. We get it. Right? We send a, a spoof packet. This is the contents of the spoof packet. What we need is the single signature of the TCP connection, which means the two sockets, the source IP and its uh, source port number, the destination IP and its destination port number. The most important thing we need the sequence number and the knowledge number. And you can see it says uh, that job one is done. You can use jobs. We didn't see any jobs because when the get this, uh, this one is quitted. So when it's quitted, we can go to the server to have a look. You see this, uh, this one, 9090, right? It's a, it's a We run on the attack, and here it says uh, time wait. Now, the interesting thing here, as we saw in the lecture, the telnet between the server, the victim machine, and the user machine is still established. But now, because a uh, spoof packet hijacked that connection, the server and the user lose the lost some packets and then they keep trying to to uh, retransmit resending those missed packets and you can see from here five six five six five six they try to resend the uh, information but uh, after a certain time the TCP protocol will time out then right? you see it is really transmission retransmission. From five to six from the to the to the user. This uh, retransmission the reason is the attacker used that uh, signal number from that client but the attack will not uh, send an acknowledgement 
So it, it expect that the user one to send the acknowledgement. However, that user one is hijacked by the attacker. So because the user, user one didn't use that sequence number, so it will not uh, reply to the server or acknowledge the server. So the server will resending the TCP packet it fall uh, into a deadlock but uh, sooner or later it will time out you can check it here uh, you see uh, the firewall and six this is just Server. We still need to wait to see whether this one will come out or not. On the client side, you see you are still here, but if you have any command, it just uh, does not accept. Because the server may transmit data to this client, the client doesn't know how to answer, otherwise it's stuck. So on the, uh, the attacker, a few days ago. Now in this case, how do we stop this one? Stop this uh, connection. So we can do the socket state command. That can mean the key to kill a connection. Destination IP and uh, destination port number. This destination forwarding address, IP and uh, port number. Okay, it's uh, killed. You can. Uh, have a look using use that state. Right. See, it's killed on the current side. The connection comes by the following host. In the real world, the user may not stay here, it will keep typing uh, commands. So, it's not uh, easy for us to. Uh, get those uh, sequence number manually. Now well, let's see how to uh, use uh, Scapy to sniff the uh, pack automatically and uh, spoof the uh, packet on the Mac to get the information, to get the secret. We can use the code sniff and spoof we wrote for lab 3. Now we don't need uh, this wire shock to do it manually, we want to do it uh, Automatic so stop capturing a uh, package. The second subtask launching the attack automatically. Code we want to use is this reset order and this is a hijack code. This is a reset order. 
we want to use this uh, sniff function. spoof function just copy it paste here task to Spoof TCP. Package. Pay attention. Every time you run your, you bring up your container, its interface is changed. Its name is changed. So we need this. Uh, This interface today, today's interface name. Paste it here because this one is copied from left string. So make sure you use today's in your containers, uh, your attacker's interface. Is it number 23? Now we want to. Uh, Acknowledge the so we will use a face port. We impersonate the user to reply to the server. So we sniff the packages sent from the server. Port, you can also type uh, host add host uh, is a field. Now the source we want from the server. The tenant server. Port number we don't know. So the source port number Before we spoof the packets, we need information from the packet. This packet we sniffed, right? Because we only sniffed uh, packets from the server, the standard server. There is a spoof. Uh, Packet or spoof packet. Now, just we need information from this uh, sniff, sniffer packet. Source destination. The uh, spoof packet we want to send from the client to the server. Sniff. Server packet. This server means the telnet server or the victim machine. Victim, victim container. So which means it comes from comes from the telnet server. And our spoof packet from attacker. 
actually the the attacker impersonate the user so from user to server that's why we fill in the, with the user's IP server's IP as the destination now source port number we got it. we can got it from the received packet right received packet TCP here please pay attention this packet we got from from server to client so the sniffed packet pkt dot source is from server right so it's the source is a server port number and its destination dot is port because the source is a source IP DST is DS, DST uh, destination IP D port So maybe uh, we write uh, source is uh, 23 from the server destination number in the user so now here we want to uh, send from the user to the server so here that's why it's deep port right the so user's uh, port number Pattern GD port is a user port number from this uh, sniffed sniffed uh, packet. This we are constructing a sniffing a spoof packet here. Spoof packet. You can also write this one source as let me make it uh, clearer. We can also use the sniff the packet user information from the sniffed uh, packet here source equals pkt ip dot dst dst is the user pkt ip dot source is a server pkt destination is the user ip Okay, now this this time is clear. The destination right, here is a uh, from user to server. Source port destination port that station port is this one or you use a uh, 23 flags new acknowledgement ACK now the sequence number is pkt tcp 
uh, knowledge number ACK. We want to uh, add some uh, more, for example, file. You choose the file 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, it's up to you. The acknowledge number TCP dot sequence number or the sniffed packet. First, again, we want to uh, steal the secret information to see whether it worked or not. Okay, I think uh, that's all. We sniffed the packet from the server to the user. Then we spoof the packet, impersonate the user, and send it to the server. Here you can check the comments to understand why we write like this. Maybe we would better write like this source host. Can I save it? Oh, no, let's uh, launch the attack. Again, before we launch the attack, we need to set up a tenant connection. So, from the user, from the user, we are uh, Run telnet to the server again. Seed DES type LS. You know there is a secret file and the user's account on the server container. On the server side, you can check the link is established. And you see the port number is different from the previous one. Okay, on the attack machine, we need to run a server first. Use the NC. Run in the background. Then we launch the attacker. Hijack water.py. We have arrows, source host, and s port. The syntax error. So I think we don't need this end. You may check the BPF uh, cheat sheet. On your S it, point again. TCP and the source host. So I just forgot the syntax. Let's check the cheat sheet. Here port, there's no S port. So it's a source or destination port. And for the host, we have Source host or destination host. Okay. Uh, messed up this uh, S port from the escaping. It's called S or C port. Not that end, to stand at the end. Con S, save it. Here when we check it, maybe we don't need that uh, yeah, no, source, source only, port. Let's try it, we can check the usage from here. Uh, 
Okay, now it's uh, sniffing. We can uh, type anything inside this uh, user site, for example, ls. Let me see, secret ls. Now I type uh, l, I want to type that s. It does not work, which means the session is hijacked. Go to the attack machine. Keep sniffing and uh, where is that uh, secret? Why it keeps sniffing from a uh, manual launch, uh, manual attack? We know the server keeps sending uh, information to the client, right? So, can you see stop it? And you see this uh, NC is already done. Now we want to see that secret information. Now it's not easy to find it. So we maybe uh, modify the program. We don't want to print out these things. Okay, let's uh, modify the program and we do it because it's already uh, scrolled off. Have jobs. You know that NC is done, which means it got the information, but it's screwed off. So one way to uh, delete, we can comment out this LS PKT. Do we have other way to stop sniffing once we uh, get the secret? Yes, save it. For example, you can check the data if it contains the information you need, and also you know what information in that data. Then you can use a stop, for example, exit to create this one. You can do it uh, by yourself. Right now, let's uh, launch the attack again, but we need to. Uh, Reset the connection because, as we did in in the previous uh, attack, we know now on the client side we cannot type anything. On the server side, you can check those uh, stats. But there is no uh, time wait because I just stop it, or maybe it's a time out. Thing is time out. Okay, now let's uh, use SS command. Okay, to kill this connection. Copy. Paste here. Depart. Destination. Okay, it's killed. Double check. It's gone. Log in again, and you see this uh, connection closed by the falling host when I killed the connection on the server. Seed D E E S. Okay, launch the attack again. Before you launch the attack, run that uh, NC netcat to set up a server. Because we need this uh, reverse here, reverse connection to get the secret launch the attack. Now on the client side, type anything. LS, yeah, does not work. Go back quickly. You see, this is a secret file. Oh, we got the the secret automatically. Again, the client side is dead. We need to kill it from the server side. So for this uh, attacker, we'll stop the sniffing and 
just both in Ctrl C, stop it, and see that NC completed its task, which means got that secret message. Okay, now let's uh, kill. Okay, we need to find the connection again here. Every time, here time wait, you see it. Time wait, uh, wait a moment, it will time out. It will disappear. So we only need to kill this one. If uh, you are not patient, you are impatient, you can kill, kill this as well. DST. Port. Okay, it's killed. You can check it. Right, you see, this one is timed out automatically from the attacker. Okay. Login to the server again. See it. D E E S. On the attacker, what we are going to do now? The task four. Creating reverse shell using TCP session hijacking. Here, task four. Task four is easy since we need a, a task three. So we only need to change the command. We embed it in the preload. Now we need this command. This command will set up a reverse shell for us, so which means we can control, we can run uh, any command on the victim machine with the user's account as the user account because we impersonate the user account. The user account is seed. Seed can do anything, then we can do anything. Which means we can do uh, whatever seed can do once we set up this uh, interactive user. That's the thing I want to uh, discuss. Here in the code, we didn't set uh, the sequence number, we just uh, So if you want to make more words, this be dot payload. Oops. And I save it. So you should be able to see all the code. That's how the code uh, looks like. Because uh, 
the instructive uh, network. connection the arrow auto to the connection okay that's it we need that uh, return symbol to work concatenation because when the user First, make sure you want to set up a TCP or a telnet from the network. So, when we can So we should be going to succeed here and I got an arrow. No below. I'm supposed to have no prayer. So I mean it's here. 
security is payload Put off this attack. Secret right? from the client. I tap areas, enter and air. So, areas, enter and air. One, four. And the secret is six. I cannot find anything. So, we will uh, check that uh, the sequence number and uh, how they are assembled. Then we will be able to understand when to uh, add a number. The number must be uh, less than the TCP window. Did you see it? On the attack machine, we get a seed. So, which means we, we created an interactive share here. Right? Press uh, enter. Something like to wait at the moment. Yes. So, why is it like this? I need to fork around my network. So, it looks like I'm stuck. I'm stuck. So, I wonder. Get this share, we can check from the server. Right. Establish for this application. What it, but, uh, I don't know why I, I cannot have anything here. We need a way to bring back the DNC back here. So it's running background. Right, you see, so what we stopped is this engine. Can you check the service? The image is still there. Here, the is there. 
because it's simple. Stop this and see your tech jobs, nothing. So let's uh, redo this attack. We need uh, this to kill these two uh, questions. Basically, TST deport. And we also need to kill the second one. Okay, also I killed. Not, not this one is not killed. I make a typo here. This is a deport. And now it's killed. Okay, again. In the situation, we have a telnet from the user to the server. DES. Seed now so its name is seed the password is D E S okay now the user logged into the server with the account seed home folder of seed on the server that is a secret file and uh, in home folder. Now on the attacker. This time, how do we launch the attacker? We may uh, launch uh, NC again. Put in the background, but this time the sniff and the spoofing are also put into the background. Okay, like this. Now we type NC. LS, LS, okay, the LS, you cannot type the second S, your attack succeeded. Here, go back to the, to the, here is the attacker, right? you see the seed, we got an interactive share. Press enter, you go back to a volume. Now you can use the ops to see you have a, and see it stopped. So now what we have two. We can use uh, bring back foreground to bring back the first one to have a look. Okay, that's one. We don't have anything. You can type uh, control Z, X, Y, Z, Z. Stop it and bring back. The Foreground two. No, you just press enter. You see this uh, invective here. Tap ls command. Right? You can see that uh, secret. You can catch secret. This is a secret file. And you see those uh, commands also echo, echoed back. So we get a interactive reverse share using TCP hijacking. Now you can type, you can do whatever this seed account can do on the victim machine. Now we complete this uh, last lap. The task for now let's uh, clean the environment. Okay, just type exit. Before we type exit, we may uh, check in this. Uh, we know now we logged into the victim machine. Right? You know that state, you should be able to see the connection from the attacker and uh, that user. Right? See this one from the attacker, this one from, oh, sorry, this one from the attacker, this one from the user. And you can, from here, have the attacker to, c to kill that user's connection. DST, certainly you can do this. 
on the victim machine. Here I just show you actually once you hack into the server you oops you can do I cannot use uh, the arrow key the port file zero file four operation not permitted now as seed seed is not a root user or root user you know, cannot do it. Only the root can kill the connection. On the server machine, you see the root, right? When we hijacked into the server, we impersonate seed, and uh, its privilege is limited. If it's a sudo user, then we can use sudo. We don't know. We, we may have a try. If it's uh, lucky, then you can work as a root as root. If a seed is a sudo, sudo, uh, port l zero five five four. Sudo command non found. So no luck. All right, now exit this. Uh, let's exit this. Uh, hijacked interactive reverse shell. You come back to uh, volume, the attacker. You can use jobs to have a look. You see, you still have uh, Python three. You can use kill those jobs one. Kill person three. Jobs, okay. Now the two are terminated. Jobs empty. And this silver. This is the attacker. Now for the silver. As a root, it can kill those uh, connections, and you will see this time wait. Wait a moment, it will time out. SS K DST to kill the connection from the user. Depot. Check it again. Here is still time wait. If you are not patient, just kill it. DST Report. Okay, now um, actually it's time now. It's time out before I kill it. You can see there's nothing show up here. Three is one when I successfully kill it, it will show up huh? like this. Okay, the user connection closed by the phone host. Now type control D to exit, control D, exit, control D, control D. Okay, after we only have two from here, type DC down. We can stop all the containers and uh, remove them. Okay. Uh, stopped and uh, removed. 